Number one tells us that two cyclists, A and B, are going on a bike ride and are meeting at an orchard. They left home at the same time. Functions A and B give their distance from the orchard in miles after riding for, riding for X hours. So the functions are defined like this. A of X is 48.5 minus 21X. B of X is 42 minus 16.8X. For each question, explain or show your reasoning. Which cyclist lives further away from the orchard? So if we think about what this means, this is they're getting closer and closer to the orchard after a certain amount of time. So if they've traveled zero hours, this is how far they are from the orchard. So if they've traveled no time at all, the first person is 48.5 um miles from the orchard and the second person is 42 miles from the orchard so that would mean that a of x is further because they're 48.5 miles away initially Then for part B, it says who will get to the orchard first and how much earlier will they arrive? And so you could graph these. So you could put these in Desmos and you could see. Um, and, you know, then their initial, this 48.5 will be here and then it's going to decrease. And then when it, you know, hits the horizontal axis, that's how long it would take it to get to the orchard. Um, so you can see which one arrives first, right? So it'll end up looking something like this. And cyclist A is going to get there first. So you could do it that way by graphing. Um, I'm just going to solve these equations. And so they get to the orchard means that their distance is zero. So they have no further to travel. So if I solve this equation, then I could just add 21x to both sides. And then I could divide by 21 and I'll get um, that this person gets there in about 2.3 hours. And then this second one, the B cyclist would be a similar idea here. So I'll just add 16.8 X to both sides and then divide by 16.8. And I'm going to get 2.5 hours. So that means that this one um, is faster, right? So got there in 2.3 hours versus 2.5. So about 0.2 hours faster. Part C, is there a time when both cyclists um, are the same distance from the orchard? So for this one, you can um, just set them equal to each other and solve. Again, you could take your, if you graphed it, you could look where they cross. So when they cross, that's going to be how far, when it is that they're both the same distance. Um, I'm not graphing these. So I'm going to set the equations equal to each other and solve that way. So I'm going to put cyclist A equal to cyclist B so that we can figure out what time would make these equations the same. So then I'll add 21X to both sides. So we'd have 48.5 equals um, 42 plus 4.2X, then subtract 42 to get those like terms on the same side. And we'd have 6.5 equals 4.2x. So then we need to get x by itself. So we'll divide by 4.2. And we would get x equals about 1.55. So after about an hour and a half, they'd be the same distance from the orchard. Number two, each equation describes or defines a function. Write the equation for the inverse. So remember, inverse is you do order of operations backwards so you can undo these things. So if we think about what do we first do to the x, we multiply by 5, then we add 65. 
So we're going to subtract 65 first to undo that. Whoops. So we're going to take y of x. And we're going to subtract 65. Then we would need to divide by the 5. That's going to get us back to x. Okay, so just follow that order of operations backwards. Um, for b, so if we plug a number in for t, we'd be multiplying by negative 0.5. Then we'd be adding 3.5. So we're going to subtract 3.5 first from our function. Then we're going to divide by the negative 0.5. And that's going to solve us for t. Then this last one, we're going to take n divided by 3. Then we're going to subtract 1.2. So to do that backwards, we're going to add 1.2. And then we're going to multiply by 3. And you want to make sure you put parentheses because you want to multiply this whole thing by 3. And then that gives us back our n. Number three, the number of chirps that a cricket makes is closely related to the temperature of their environment. When the temperature is between 12 and 38 degrees, we can tell the temperature by counting the number of chirps. Um, the formula that's commonly used is to count the number of chirps in 25 seconds, divide that number by three, then add four to get the temperature. Let M be the number of chirps made in 25 seconds and C is the temperature in Celsius. So when the temperature is 84 degrees, or sorry, what is the temperature when there are 84 chirps heard in 25 seconds? So we're gonna take the 84 chirps and we're gonna divide it by three. Once we do that, we're gonna add four. So 84 divided by three gives us 28 and then we'll add four and we find out that it's 32 degrees Celsius. Write an equation that defines C as a function of M. So the temperature equals, and what did we just do here? Okay, we took the number of chirps, divided by three, and then added four. So M is our number of chirps. We'll take that divided by three, and then we'll add four. Um, how many chirps would we expect to hear in 25 seconds when it is 14 degrees Celsius? So now we know the temperature is 14, and we want to solve for the number of chirps. So we would want to subtract the 4 first, okay, from both sides. So we would get 10 equals whatever the chirps are divided by 3. So then we could multiply by 3 to get that the number of chirps had to have been 30. So then it says write an equation that defines the inverse of the function that we wrote. So we want to do the inverse of this function in part B. So we would take M divided by 3 first and then add 4. So if we're going backwards... We're going to take C minus 4 first. Then we're going to take that number and multiply it by 3. That will give us our M. Number 4, a college student borrows $360 from his cousin to repair his car. He agrees to pay $15 a week until the loan is paid off. Function L represents the amount owed W weeks after the student borrows the money. Write an equation to represent this function. Use function notation. So L of W is the loan amount left after however many weeks. So this person started with $360 and then they're going to pay off $15 per week. So it's going to be $360 their debt that they owe minus $15 a week that they're going to pay on that loan. Um, then it wants us to write an equation to represent the inverse of this function and explain what it tells us. So again, to go backwards, we want to do order of operations backwards from the variable. So if we plugged in something here, we would be multiplying it by negative 15 
and then adding that 360. So now we'll want to take L of W, we'll want to subtract the 360 first, then divide by the negative 15, that's going to get us W. So this is going to tell us the number of weeks we have left to pay when we know a certain amount of money that we have left to pay. So like if we know we have $300 left, we can plug it in here. That'll tell us how much, how many weeks we have left. So then this wants to know how many weeks do we have left when the student pays off the loan. And this means when the loan itself equals zero. So once we've paid it all off. So then we would say in here, we have $0 left to pay off minus 360 divided by negative 15. So then this is going to be negative 360 divided by negative 15, and that will tell us 24 weeks. So 24 weeks to pay off that debt. Number five, a family bought a used car that had been driven for 12,000 miles. The table shows the total distance and miles that the car has traveled each year since the purchase. On average, how many miles does the family drive each year? Explain or show your reasoning. So we want to know how much the family drove, right? So we want to see how much, how many miles is this? So we'll do 2170, uh, 21,750 minus how much was there when we got the car. And that will tell us how many miles the family has driven it, right? So if we subtract those, we get that the family has driven it 9,750 miles in three years. So then if we want it per year, we have to divide the amount they've driven by three to find out that they drive about 3,250 miles per year. Then it wants us to write an equation that could define function M, which is the miles traveled since the years it was purchased. So the miles traveled since the years it was purchased, we'd have, you know, the 12,000 miles that it started at, plus the amount that they travel per year. So 3,250 per year. Then it wants us to write the inverse of that equation. Okay, so we'll go backwards from this variable, right? So here's the variable, multiplying by 3,250 and then adding 12,000. So we're gonna wanna subtract the 12,000 first, then divide by 3,250. That's gonna get us um, the time. If the family's driving trend continues, when will the car have traveled 50,000 miles? So now we know how much time it will take if we know we want 50,000 miles traveled. So we subtract off the initial 12,000 that they drove, and then we divide by the average that they drive in a year. So 50,000 minus 12,000 is that they've driven 38,000 miles and we know they drive 3,250 per year. So if we divide that, we get like 11.7 years. So that's um, about 12 years it would take them to drive that many miles.